Hello, today is Wednesday, June 24th, and I'm asking the question, what do you know about adoption? In this installment of our Midweek Connection, we're going to look at what it means when God adopts us. Last week, we talked about schoolyard picks, and we compared that with how God chooses his people. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 says, For he chose us in him. For he, that's God, chose us, that's believers, Christians, in him. That means to be with him in his forever family. But we saw that his choices are not based on schoolyard picks. God does not choose based upon wanting the tallest, the biggest, the most athletic, the most popular, the most intelligent, the most talented, the best looking, the most obedient, or any of the other things that we humans might take into consideration when we choose our teammates. Today, let's add verse five and consider what verses four and five say to us about God choosing us and bringing us into his family. Today, we're talking about being adopted by God. Verse four says this, for he chose us and him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in love before him. And then adding verse five, in love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. There is a principle taught in the Bible that theologians call the doctrine of election. Election involves some pretty heavy, some pretty deep theology. And the doctrine of election can be challenging to fully understand. And some Christians, when they start to grasp the working knowledge of that doctrine, they decide to recoil from it. When they start to understand it, they don't like it. In trying to understand the doctrine of election, it leads some to ask the question, is God being fair to everyone when he elects the saints? So some believers struggle with the doctrine, doctrine of election. But relax, I'm not going to try to, today to unpack everything involved in that doctrine. Simply put, it means that salvation begins with God, not with man. In John chapter 15 and verse 16, it says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you, or the King James says, I ordained you to go and to produce fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. And then, again, salvation begins with God, not with man. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says this, For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Salvation begins with God, not with man. We might want to take a deeper look at the doctrine of election down the road, but last week we already looked at one piece of election. God chose us before we were born, even before the earth was created. Today we're looking at another piece of election. God adopts us. So what do you know about adoption? One type of adoption is when we adopt principles or beliefs and we make them our own. Another type of adoption occurs with pets. We're all familiar with that. And still another type of adoption occurs between parents and children. Let's talk about adopting a pet. If you have a choice between adopting a dog or a cat, I recommend you get the dog. The truth be told, people don't adopt cats. It's the other way around. The cat determines who they will adopt. One moment the cat likes you, and need you. But most of the time, the cat acts like you are an annoyance to be put up with. You are someone the cat doesn't have to tolerate if it doesn't want to. Get a dog. Dogs will love you every minute of every day. But when you adopt a pet, what's involved? Usually that means the pet is coming home to live with you. I've had dogs all my life since I was a wee lad on the farm, and I've come to believe that dogs shouldn't be chained outside. They are very social animals. They want desperately to be with you in the house. 
Today we have a cat. The cat, on the other hand, is an out, our cat is an outdoor cat. There are three good reasons that our cat is an outdoor cat. First, I have a slight allergy to cats. Second, our cat still has its front claws. So the allergy and the claws, those alone are good reasons not to let the cat in the house. But also, it was a rescue cat already used to being outdoors. She wouldn't want to be confined inside our house. Our cat is a prolific hunter of chipmunks, mice, even moles. She is a great outdoor cat. When you adopt a pet, you bring it home. You get it supplies, vaccinations, pet toys, and you feed it, and you care for it, and you love it. When you adopt a child, adoption rises to a whole nother level, doesn't it? You still bring them home, and you still feed them and care for them, and you get them toys and supplies and vaccinations to keep them healthy. But it's much more than that. It's a long-term commitment with a child. They become your child forever. They are given your last name. They become your heirs in equal standing with any biological children that you may have. And you love them just the same as any other children you may already have. And so it is when God adopts us. He says, it, it, the Bible says he adopts us into his family forever. It's a long-term commitment. We become his sons and his daughters. We become joint heirs to all that God offers. We even take his last name. It says we become sons of Jesus Christ. And how then are we identified from that day forward? As Christians, Christians as Christ followers, that's our new identity. John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, See what great love the Father has given us, that we should be called his children, God's children. And we are, 1 John 3, 1. When you pray today, thank God for his permanent adoption of you into his forever family. You get to be called by his wonderful name. You get all the promises and all the provisions. You inherit all that Jesus has to offer. You get all of the forgiveness and all of his love. Remember verse 5. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. What an amazing, generous gift from an amazing, loving Heavenly Father. We hope that you're thankful and that you love Him back with your whole heart. What does it mean to be adopted into God's family? Maybe we have a little better understanding of that today. And all of God's people said, Amen.